Oh man, after months of planning, uh, writing stuff down, getting myself organized, going through my practice runs and things along that ways, I am super excited to finally bring you guys my favorite RPG of all time. What's going on everyone? Metalblade427 here and I welcome you to the next game that I will be completing on my channel. Yes, I did say completing. Uh, originally released for the Sega Dreamcast in 2000, Skies of Arcadia, or Eternal Arcadia as it was called in Japan, was developed by Overworks and published by Sega. This is Skies of Arcadia Legends, which was released for the GameCube in 2003. What's the difference between Legends and the original, you may ask? Well, Legends is what's considered an enhanced port. It takes everything that made the original Skies of Arcadia a masterpiece and doesn't change it at all, actually, with the exception of, like, the encounter rates, which are a little bit different, and some experience points. The games are basically exactly the same. It's just that Legends added stuff to it that pretty much fleshed out the story a little bit more, made um, for uh, more stuff for you to find, for you to discover, things along that way. It's like, it just added so many great things to the game that was already amazing. And this this is just going to be so, so good. No, no, I don't want this. Get back to the, um, to the first part and everything. Uh, for those of you out there that have never played Skies of Arcadia or really have no idea even what it is, think of it this way. You ever play yourself a JRPG or any RPG for that matter? And in each one of them, there's always that point in the game where you get possibly the best item in it. The airship or some type of means to be able to fly around the world at your leisure doing all of that stuff. The whole concept of getting the airship is this game. They took that idea and made an entire game around it. And let me tell you, it is beautiful, it is amazing, it is just epic, and I am so happy to be able to finally play it for you guys. Because again, like I said, this took a while to uh, get through and everything. And I'm going to explain that right now. I'm going to hit new game, and we're going to go into uh, just this little section right here. Now, Skies of Arcadia has a very interesting feature to it, in that uh, you play as an air pirate. And that's kind of why I have, you know, Pirate Blade 427 right here. You know, he had to change outfits and everything in order to prep himself for this particular game. But uh, you play as a pirate, and as you go through this game, you earn different ranks. And depending on your decisions and what you do and everything, you know, your rank goes up and people honor you and they say different things to you and they're like, oh, it's, it's the, the yada yada yada, oh, it's, it's an honor, my, you know, it's, it's really cool to watch the way uh, all the NPCs interact with your character, the better ranks you have. Now, with uh, Legends, there was a bunch of ranks that was added to it, and the best rank in this game that you could possibly achieve is called Vice the Legend. That, my friends, is what I'm going to be going after in this entire play playthrough because I have never, in the amount of times I've, I've beaten this game, probably like eight or nine times, straight through, including level 99 runs, I have never achieved Vice the Legend rank, but I'm going to do it for you now. In order to achieve Vice the Legend rank, I need to find all 119 chests. So that's 100% chest discoveries. Um, uh, speaking of discoveries, I need to find all 89 world discoveries on the map. So I'll be getting 100% of those. There are eight bounties that I must fight that I must fight and defeat in order to get uh, the legend rank. There are 24 moonfish that I must find in order to get the legends rank, and there are four black spot encounters that I must go to and defeat in order to get Vice the Legend ranking. Uh, there's also a few other things that I need to do in order to get the special secrets that are in this game. Uh, that also includes finding all 22 crew members and then killing all four giant monster battles. In addition to that, I will be finding all 30 chams and the three Abiric champs? I think that's our, I think, Ab Abiric? Ab Abiric? I don't know. I, I say they're Abiric champs because that's just what it looks like to me. Um, so this is, this is a lot of collectibles in this game and they are just scattered throughout the entire world and in order to get them, you gotta go through some pretty interesting, you know, story modes and things along that way in order to find them. So, for those of you out there that have no idea what any of that list was or anything like that, trust me, I'll explain it to you as the game goes on. But for right now, we have lots of tutorial to get into because 
We have to learn how to be sky pirates. I mean, who doesn't want to be a pirate? And now we're going to be flying around instead of sailing. It just, it just adds a whole new dimension of fun to pillaging people. So let's go ahead and disable the rumble because I really don't care. And yes, I will be doing uh, voice acting for uh, the characters in this. I apologize already if I start mispronouncing things here and there. It's going to happen. Just don't hurt me too badly on your criticism. And you out there know who I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and start this epic journey up to the skies. Moons play a big part in this game, so expect to be hearing about them and seeing them a lot. I love the way the ships look in this. Except for this one. This is a weird looking ship. What is she doing out here? How does this thing work? What? Is that fairy dust? I, I don't... I... What happened to physics? I guess physics are just like a whatever in this world. Ha <laughs> ha We finally found her. Admiral Alfonso. Her ship's in range of our cannons. Excellent. Prepare to fire concussion shells on my command, but avoid hitting her ship directly. We need her alive so we can question her later. Fire! Come on, dude. Your ship is like a jillion times bigger than hers. You really need to be firing these cannons. She looks so defenseless. Oh no, duck! Oh man, how did nothing on that ship break? I mean, the back part of it looks like it's made out of some type of glass. And where are your wings and thrusters and possibility? I don't. It's so weird. It looks very different compared to the ship uh, that uh, Alfonso is flying, that's for sure. Even her clothes are completely different. I mean, who travels like that? You, you would think that she would have put on something a little bit more comfortable for a journey like that. Your Excellency, the girl has been knocked unconscious, but she's unharmed. She's been taken aboard our ship. You didn't see it because, you know, it had to happen quickly off screen, but trust me, she's here. Ha <laughs> ha the Empress will be very pleased with me. I'm sure to be rewarded rather handsomely, I might add. What? Where did that come from? It sounded like an explosion. Status report now. The the lower hull has been hit. Someone is attacking us. Attacking us? Who would dare attack a vessel of the Imperial Armada? There's a small ship hiding in the clouds off port side. The, the flag, air pirates. Yes, all the crew had the same voice on it. Deal with it, it happens. But here we go, yes, our pirates are coming to, well, we're not really saving the day. We're coming to pillage a ship because you know, that's what pirates do. We see something that they want and uh, they see something they want and then boom, we want it. I mean, we live in this world of Arcadia where you have all these like high-tech ships and everything and they still use standard rope to latch on. Hand-thrown rope, mind you. It's not even in like a special rope cannon. Air pirate scum! Don't you know that we're Valuan Imperial soldiers? Now I'm gonna pronounce it Valuan. It's Valua, Valua, something along that way. I think that's how it's supposed to be. Or Valua? I don't think it's val like a value. I don't think that's what it is. I think it's Valua. So we're just gonna uh, Valuan right there. So just more warning about pronunciation, but it happens. No, of course I know. That's why we attacked your ship. You guys have the best stuff. Hey, I'm Vice of the Blue Robes, and in a few minutes, I'll be relieving you of all your valuables. <laughs> Attacking us all by yourself, you're either incredibly brave or incredibly stupid. We'll be tossing you overboard. Wait for me! Vice, you left without me! I'm not going to get love it. I'm not going to let you have all the fun! Oh hi, I'm Ika. I'm a blue robe like Vice. And we're robbing you! You dare mock the Blue Empire with your insolence? Kill them! 
toss their corpses over the side. Now oh, they can get right to the right even point. Okay, guys, here we go. Ready? Tutorial time. So, the battle system in Skies of Arcadia reminds me a lot of, like, uh, Golden Sun or Earthbound or something like that, where you have your command list here, and it's, like, kind of turn-based, but it's kind of not, because you can input all your commands with all of your characters first, and then the round starts, and depending on, um, you know, speeds of your characters and things like that, will determine who acts when and things like that. Certain things do take priority over others, and uh, that's pretty much it. So, lesson one, basic attacking. You do have your standard attack right here. You can then choose which one of the guys that you wish to uh, target. There is a chance that they'll dodge out of the way and miss. There's also a chance that you'll do a critical hit. A few items in this game will increase both of those chances of your character dodging an attack or doing a critical hit, but generally speaking, it's just, you know, just attacking and see what happens. Uh, you can guard as well. Guarding is kind of a skip your turn type deal, but you do take half damage for the duration of that round. Uh, you can use items as well as you collect them. Right now, we just have attack. This, this is what our equipment is. So we have our weapon, our armor, and our accessory. You can change these in the middle of battle without costing a turn. But we'll get into all that a little bit later. I don't. I don't really use that feature much unless I have to. There's very, very few instances. Um, and then, of course, you can run away from battle as well. There are other options to this little, like, circle here, but we're just going to stick with that now as lesson one. So we're going to choose a soldier. Now, you can also go back and change any of your uh, inputs so long as you did not input the last command. So, Ika here, which I'm pretty sure that's how her name is pronounced. Uh, I can always hit back and just choose to reset vice and stuff, but as soon as I go here and set her, the round begins. Here goes. Now, everybody kind of sees she missed. Great. Now, everybody just kind of moves around on their own. There is no control over the characters during the fights. So, sometimes characters will run to the opposite end, sometimes they'll group together. Oh, good, she missed as uh, she dodged as well. See, getting all kinds of interesting things. And look, they group together uh, into the center here. Very nice. Uh, I'm going to have Vice attack that one, and I'm going to have Ike attack this one. Oh, and she crit hits! We are just getting all types of cool stuff in this first fight. There you go. I explain things and the game shows it! This is gonna be a great playthrough. I'm so excited. Ah. Uh, I just wanted them to talk. You're gonna get that every so often in this as well. The characters do have voices, but it's very sporadic in terms of when they actually speak. There's no point in resisting. Throw down your weapons and hand over your ship. Even though you're surrounding us, we clearly have the upper hand. Imbeciles! What did the two of you think you could do against the five of us? Take them out! Ow! My helmet! I think you miscounted. I only see four of you. Dad! We'll take care of these guys. Make your way to the bridge and shut down the engines. And when we're out of here, remember, it's Captain, not Dad. Got it? <sighs> yeah, yeah. Aye, aye, Captain. Hey, Ika, shall we go introduce ourselves to the captain of this ship? I'm ready when you are. All right, let's go find the bridge. Let's go. See, there you go, right there. He speaks for me. It's amazing. So, uh, at this point, we will be running into various uh, enemies. We will be able to get into random encounters and everything like that. And what you have right here is our very first area of the game. This is Alfonso's ship. Now, I am going to be throwing up on the screen the treasures that you will be able to find here. There are four treasures in total on Alfonso's ship. Um, I will be doing this as kind of uh, half a checklist for me and kind of a checklist for you out there if this is the first time you're playing it. Keep in mind, there are actually quite a number of areas in this game that once you leave them, you cannot go back to. This is one of them, the very first area of the game you cannot go back to. So you need to find all of your treasures before moving on. So out of the four, we're gonna go over here and grab the first one on the list, which is a Sacri Crystal. So that is our first actual item. Most items in this game are based off of magic spells. So there is a magic in the game called Sacri, and it does the exact same thing, restores 500 HP to one ally. 
I'll be going over magic a little bit later. That's part of the later lessons, quote unquote, that I'll be teaching you in this introduction. But for right now, we got our treasure. I showed you the list. Let's go on this way. Come on up and head down the path here. Uh, I would like these episodes to be roughly between uh, 25 and 30 minutes long, but anybody that knows RPGs know that you never can tell sometimes. Well, well. Air pirates have decided to infest my ship. I am Alfonso, cherished son, cherished son of Valua, Valua's most distinguished family and an admiral of the Imperial Army. Armada. I say what I want. I don't care. Shut up. <laughs> Normally, lowlife such as yourselves would never have the opportunity to bask in such greatness. Consider yourself fortunate. Yeah, right. Who's the girl? I never thought someone of your stature would stoop to kidnapping. Ha! You're very observant for a rogue. However, I cannot waste my time dealing with you. I simply must get going. I think I shall have you exterminated like the pests you are. Dispose of them. Haha, <laughs> see, you said it for me. It's awesome. So much sporadic speaking is crazy. Okay, so now we're going to be heading on into Battle 2, and we will be going into Lesson 2, which I'm going to title Spear Points. If you notice up in the upper left corner, you see 2 slash 8. Those are your spirit points. Uh, Vice and Ica right now will gain one spirit point a turn. Everything is pulled together into your party. So Vice was able to get one spirit point uh, per turn and he can hold up to a maximum of four. Same thing for Ika. That's why the two of them together are two and eight. Spirit points are used to pretty much do anything. Um, you can use items freely and you can attack freely, but as far as super moves concerned, you need spirit points uh, or special moves or whatever they're called. Right now, Vice is the only one with a special move, Cutlass Fury. Uh, there we go. Uh, Vice unleashes his fury on a single enemy, causing major damage. So, it's a single target attack that does a pretty decent amount of damage, uh, you know, especially for him because he's your main attacker. You need 7 SP in order to cast it. Every round, Vice and Ica will gain 2 SP. Don't be afraid to use them because they do not carry over to the next battle. They are just battle by battle. Uh, same thing for magic. I can't show you right now because none of my characters have anything. But every spell costs a certain amount of SP and only one MP. That's why Vice has three MP, and I think it's this button. There you go. And then Ika has four. Now, you probably saw me do that thing with the, the weapons, and I'll explain that also uh, really quickly um, as soon as I'm done with this. Last command here on here is Focus. Basically, this will use the turn for whoever you want it to to gain an additional however many SP that they can gain for that round. So right now, again, Vice and Ica can each gain one SP per round. If you use Focus, he will then gain another one SP. As they level up, they'll be able to have more SP at the beginning of the round, and Focus will do more. So right now, Focus is kind of pointless. You can also spin the camera around for no apparent reason, just to kind of check the you know at your characters and their weapons and everything. Um, what you saw me do there was switching elemental affinities, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that for the next round. What I am going to do, though, is we do have four guys right here. I think we're just going to go ahead and take these guys, these guys, these guys out one by one. I will be planning on talking about enemies and things along that way, as I do through most of my playthroughs. It's just for right now, I'd rather just kind of explain the basics of the game and get that completely out of the way, so this way... As more fights come about, you'll be able to see uh, all kinds of other things happening. Alright, so with these two guys here, you know what, I think I will uh, go ahead and do that for right now. Let me just go ahead and hit the attack, and they're both the same, so these are guards. Uh, 29 HP, basically all they can do is attack, they give you 1 experience, 3 gold, and they have a chance of dropping sacred crystals at the end of uh, the, uh, the round. Uh, their names are going to be in the color of the affinity that they are, so these are yellow enemies. Again, all of that I will explain to you a little bit later about what that is, but for right now, why don't we just go ahead... Um, you know what, let's do a double focus, just because I can. I have the time. I'm explaining SP, so I might as well show off what everything does while I'm in, like, the least amount of danger. 
Ow, jerk. Focus again. See, they only gain one SP, because that's all they can gain from round anyway. Once Vice is able to gain two, a Focus will gain two SP. Now then, let's go ahead and use Cutlass Fury. Doesn't use any magic points or anything like that. You just have to use seven SP. Doesn't matter which one you aim, so I'm gonna aim at him. And we'll have Ica go down for this guy. Uh, most likely in the future, I will be skipping these, but you can check out the animation. I wish this was multi-hit, but that's all right. Boom! 118 damage compared to his normal. I think he was doing like 60. So it's a pretty good multiplier right off the hop. Yeah, get another crit hit. Excellent. Take everyone down. Love it. There you go, everybody. That was easy. Lesson two complete on uh, SP. There we go. Good. Everybody leveled up. That's very nice. I like it. And good. I can learn the magic, which means next uh, battle, I can explain uh, lesson three, which is, well, magic. Uh, now you're going to start running into random battles with the alarm going off. Let me go back here and grab our second chest, which has two sacred crystals in it. Uh, I hope to get into another battle. I most likely will get into another battle. Even though they did adjust the encounter rates for uh, Legends, it's still pretty high in some areas. Uh, I'm going to go this way and trigger a battle, apparently. So let's go on into this, and I will talk about... Magic. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and have Vice attack him. And now we have access to magic. Magic works again, like I said before. It requires a certain amount of SP in order to cast, and then it requires one MP as well. So, in this case, in order to cast Sakri, which I can then heal any member of my party for 500 HP, I need two SP and one MP at the very least. Magic ex gains experience at the end of battle based kind of where you are in the world. Right now, we're earning two magic points for, of experience at the end of battle. Later on, we'll be earning one, then we'll go back to two, and then three, and all kinds of other stuff like that. Uh, you get more points depending on what color your weapons are. And this goes into the whole affinity thing. This is an affinity chart that I put together, and it shows a lot of what's strong and what's weak against, you know, other elements. The way I saw it as is, Every element is strong against two colors, but weak against two others, and neutral to two more. So there's six in total. And by neutral, I mean it just does normal damage. So there's like a gajillion different charts out there, and this is the most accurate one I know of. And in fact, if you have this game, your instruction manual is wrong. It's actually completely wrong. Uh, they show you this, but really these things should be moved around. Like it's, it's, it's so weird. So, what's the purpose of that? Obviously, we don't have any attacking magic, but our weapons have thus those elemental properties to them. So, red is fire, green is nature, blue is wind and water, uh, purple is ice, yellow is thunder, and um, silver is like life and death. I think it's called void or something like that. In order to change that around, you hit the button, and depending on how many of the six elemental stones you have, you'll be able to change it to all the colors. We'll, we'll get them all really quickly, but for right now, all we have is red and blue. The way the magic experience works is like, for example, at the end of this uh, battle, we're gonna get two magic experience, I believe. So if each one of our characters each have a different color on, uh, so Ika has green and Vice has red, then Vice, for his spells, will get two points of experience for his next red magic spell and then two points of experience for his next green spell. If we switch him to green, so now everybody is the same color, Vice will get two for green, he'll get an additional two for green, and then he'll get, on top of that, a third set of two, so six in total, because everybody has the same element equipped. That's how it, that works. If you have everyone with the same element, you get like a boost. But if everybody's different, then it just kind of spreads out the experience a little bit more. So for right now, I am going to keep him on green, um, just so I can uh, start getting uh, more green magic. Yeah. Each one of the magic spells has kind of their own uniqueness to it. Green is your healing spells, as you can probably tell by the Sakri uh, that we've been getting. Red is power-up spells, increasing your attack and defense. Yellow powers down things. Blue speeds things up with Quicka. Uh, purple is very uh, status-oriented, so you have confusion and you have sleep in that. And silver are instant kills, so that's pretty much what all of the elements do. And again, as I said before, as we go on through the game, I will be explaining in more detail. We're just doing a quick tutorial right now about how the basis, the base stuff works. <laughs> there we go. Very 
Good, good job, my man. Excellent. Okay, so I'm sorry. It's one experience, and so that means I thought we were getting two for some reason. So that means, yeah, everybody then gets three uh, experience points towards green, and we get a sacred crystal anyway. Hooray, hurrah, and all that in between. Right, now let's actually trigger this. What? How did you defeat my soldiers? Heh, if you want my ship that badly, you can have it. I'll get another. I am very busy. I do not have time to deal with you personally. Now, if you'll excuse me. And he's just going to uh, walk himself out of here like the sniveling little coward he is. Alright, let's run this way. I have to shut off the alarm or else I may run into more random battles, which is very possible. So right over here next to the door is that. Go. And I need to run back this way in order to get our third chest of the area. Um, I will not be showing every random battle in this game because, of course, they become very, very numerous as time goes on. So certain ones will get cut, especially if they don't have anything to do with the story, if they aren't forced encounters, and of course if they're not boss fights and things like that. So that's just one way that I'm going to be able to keep these uh, keep these episodes moving at a very nice pace. You know, you, it's an RPG. You want to definitely be able to see the story and know what's going on with everybody. So in order to do that, you want to be able to just kind of move things along, you know, efficiently. And I don't think, is this a door? Yeah, it's a door, but we can't get through, you jerk. Uh, over here, it's a save point if you need it, and to, uh, <laughs> it's a save point if you need it, and to be honest with you, I am going to use it. I'm just so excited. I'm tripping over my words. I apologize. Um, however, I am going to cut the episode right here. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like and comment down below, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you can get equipped with me, Metal Blade 427 Again, all tutorial stuff, but in the next episode, I'll be going over a little bit more, mostly like in my menus and everything. But until then, I hope you guys are excited as I am to be going through this epic journey with Vice and his friends. Trust me, if you've never seen this before, you'll absolutely love it. If you have played it before, just pull up a chair and just be ready for it all because it's just, it's just going to be amazing. It's so going to be so good. And Vice probably going to sit there and start tapping his toes, you know, trying to tell me, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. So. I'm going to finish gushing about this game right now. Until next time, everyone, you guys have a good one, and I will catch you all later.